something different than the food at the lodge. Like the food at the lodge is really, really good and they cater to you, but it's like the same things from week to week. Something's over. So it's nice to get away. I'm gonna get my food to go and head back to the barber shop and take care of these natural curls. <laughs> today we had a meeting with our I, IOE instructors um, so I met Brian his name is Brian he's going to be evaluating me on my IOE flight tomorrow so me and another guy here he's gonna be both of our evaluators so we sat down and probably talked with him for about an hour today and he kind of just let us know what to expect um, for the IOE flight tomorrow so he seemed really really nice um, actually not seemed he was really really nice he kind of put my nerves at ease even though I'm not really worried about the IOE at all because that's just simply doing what we know to do on the plane um, yes we're being evaluated step by step but for whatever reason I'm feeling really confident about that part um, but he did say a few things that clarified a few questions that I had so that was really nice to be able to meet him today and talk to him and we'll meet tomorrow at Dunkin Donuts and go through um, security and all that stuff together and he's gonna show me a few things beforehand and then we're gonna get on that plane and I'm going to conduct my first flight as a flight attendant like crazy right well, not really a certified flight attendant yet because I don't get my wings until Tuesday, but you all know what I mean. So, that was cool. Then I studied a little bit. I just kind of went over some things. So, I'm doing my IOE on the A320, the Airbus 320. Um, so, I just kind of read through pre-flighting and making sure that, you know, I was having the correct steps of disarming and arming the door for that plane. But other than that, there's not really a lot that you can do to prep for the IOE. I mean, we haven't really learned exactly how to do service. I mean, other than obviously handing out the Coke and stuff, there's certain ways that they do things. So I can't really learn that. I can't prep for that because we haven't learned it yet. So we'll learn that tomorrow while I'm on the plane. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really it. I just do my thing and, and check that off the list <laughs> and do my EME on Monday and I'm be graduating on Tuesday y'all like literally I keep saying it but this has been the shortest longest process I've ever been through the days are long the weeks were short um, yeah it just it flies by it really really does um, for our graduation, our instructors asked us to kind of remix a song of our choosing and kind of throw in, you know, just to make it around our experience. So, me and a couple other girls and this one guy sat downstairs for about an hour and remixed the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song and added in some cool little JB experiences into the lyrics. So, that should be fun to do for graduation um, so yeah that's really about it that's all my day consisted of is very easy breezy day um, I didn't really want to get into too much or start thinking too much into my EME because I just really want to focus tomorrow for my IOE I didn't want to work myself up too much I do still have some CBTs to do CBTs computer pay computer based training on the A321 so I think I mentioned in a video prior that we have three planes that we fly and one of them we don't even train on 
when I said that was kind of weird because it is weird. Um, so after our EMEs, we do a short little instructor training literally on the few differences between the A321 and the A320. So we ha I have to do some CBTs on that before I get to my EME, but I won't probably do those until I get back from my flight Saturday night or Sunday when I'm off. But yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to go to bed, wind down a little bit. I have some real estate stuff to kind of fix paperwork-wise. If y'all didn't know, yes, I've still been kind of working on a few contracts while I'm here. I don't know how, but I've been doing it. Um, so I've had a little hiccup with something, so I need to get that together. I got a good breakfast in my system. Now I'm about to go get dressed for my IOE flight. This is so exciting! <laughs> I'm gonna be a flight attendant on Tuesday. Oh. And I'm done with my first flight. Oh my gosh. So, <sighs> so my IOE went great. The first leg was nice and cool and we learned. And the second leg was full, full flight. Super busy. They worked me, but the customers on the plane told me how great service was and how cute my smile was, and oh, it's just making it all so worth it. So, one more evaluation on Monday, and I'm done. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I am one step closer to earning my wings, and yes. I said earning because this is something that is not handed to you. This is not a given. You have to work hard to earn your wings to become a flight attendant or a in-flight crew member, as my airline likes to call us. So today I did my IOE, my in-flight operational experience, evaluation. <laughs> All these acronyms y'all I can't keep up no more but anyways I worked my first flight today and I was evaluated on it and I passed Yay! Um, it was it was good you know I think I, I told y'all that I wasn't really nervous about this flight at all um, I'm more nervous about the EME that I have on Monday um, but I was actually very relaxed um, and just kind of ready to get it done and really see what working an entire flight is really like and So I experienced that today and it was great um, I went from Orlando to Providence, Rhode Island and we did a very quick turn um, And came back from Providence, Providence back to Orlando. So <clears throat> On my flight there my instructor and actually um it was two of us from my training class that was on my flight because um, the other girl's flight got canceled. So they, did, they just paired us up. So we had two IOE instructors on there and two of um, us in flight trainees. So my instructor, he was very nice. I met him yesterday. He kind of gave us an overview of how the day would go. So I got to the airport. We met at Dunkin' Donuts. He bought me some... Um, green tea and just you know whatever little snacks we wanted um, he showed me how to go through um, the employee uh, pre-check line it's called KCM known crew member so that was really nice not having to wait in line in the security line with all those hundreds of people coming to Disney World here in Orlando Florida um, so that was a really cool experience because they talk about it all the time and it's a privilege to have it um, and then we went to the crew lounge, uh, for our airline here in Orlando airport and met a lot of pilots and just a few flight attendants that were in there and the, um, in-flight base management that was there. He showed me how to work some of our systems on the computer about making my schedule and things like that. And then we went and walked to the plane as a crew and we did a flight attendant briefing um, and just every other phase of flight. Um, so on the way there, I wasn't being evaluated. 
it was more of me shadowing him, him showing me how things are done, and then on the way back I was um, being evaluated. So, <laughs> and of course, on the flight there, um, the plane was not full. We only had 125 people out of 150 seats. Um, so we still, you know, not too bad of a load. The flight there though, the one that I had to work by myself, of course, it was full. We had 149 people out of 150. So um, I was definitely worked <laughs> hard. People were asking for a lot of things. Um, and this is the part of the job that they don't teach you in training. Um, somebody told us earlier this week that you're going to realize that 50% of the job is taught to you while in training and the other 50% you actually learn on the line. So everything that has to do with the customer service aspect of the job, you truly do not learn while you're here. Everything that we're learning here, as you all know, is about emergency situations and, um, configurations of the planes and things like that nothing has to do with how to deal with customers not really um how to serve a drink how to make this drink how to, none of that all of that is hands-on um day by day learning as you just make your way through becoming a flight attendant like just working and learning new things and talking to other in-flight crew members that's how you learn those stuff so it was definitely cool finally getting to see that part, how they set up the galley, where everything is kept. Um, I definitely do not care for the way that service is done. Um, we don't push carts down the aisle, at least not yet. Um, we have trays and we go and take orders. We take the whole order and then we go back and forth with trays until we're done passing out everybody's drinks. So I'm not really a fan of it, but for me, um, it came easy naturally <laughs> because I'm laughing because of that song, you know, anyways, maybe I'll, anyways, but for me, it came easy because, um, I've been a server before I, my first real job was working at Papacitos in Houston, Texas as a a hostess and a to-go server and the server and I've worked at plenty of other restaurants so that wasn't really new to me having to take an order and make sure that I bring back the right thing and having people stop me on the way to getting something else and forgetting things like that wasn't new to me but the other girl that was on the flight doing her IOE with me as well she was very frustrated and flustered Cause she came from a nine to five environment behind the desk has never done any type of waiting or service job in her life so she was extremely extremely frustrated and you know feeling kind of down on herself and you know just doubting things because it just wasn't what she was expecting I guess so yeah I mean you know, all, all I could really tell her is that, you know, this is just something that you'll get used to over time. Just like any other aspect of life, not even jobs. When you start something new that you've never done before, it is going to be difficult in the beginning because you've never done it and you're not sure if you're doing it right and you're questioning everything and you're overthinking everything. Um, so that's what me and the other two evaluators told her. So I know she went to bed pretty early. Well, not early because we got back at like 10, but she went to bed just kind of feeling in not as positive as I wish, you know, she would have felt. Because I felt really good after we left. I was excited. I was like, okay, I'm ready for this. Um, there was definitely still things that I learned and I was like, wow, you know, I never knew that this was truly like this or whatever the case may be. But I'm ready for it. I'm always up for a challenge. I guess that's why people always say why is five to ten training so long and extensive and intense because all they see is us literally doing service picking up trash passing out snacks and drinks um, they don't know the behind the scenes um, so I'm gonna do a video one day in depth about how to become a flight attendant but that 
But those are the real characteristics that they're really looking for when they're doing the hiring process. Is somebody that already kind of has that service experience, that customer service experience, because they know they're not going to teach you that in training and you need to already know it so that they can focus on the real things that they want you to know and need you to know while in training and once you get on the line you'll have somewhat of an idea what you're doing. Um, if you've never been in any type of hospitality restaurant industry before and becoming a flight attendant is something that you really are interested in doing, um, I would suggest you know go in and getting a job that has something to do with this so you can kind of get some of that under your belt so you'll know what to experience and it won't be a rude awakening for you um, but yeah even if you have a full-time job you know go work at a restaurant on the weekends or something and serve some tables deal with customers take orders learn how to multitask in that type of environment um, for me, what made it a lot more difficult, oh, I'm giving y'all a lot, sorry. <laughs> um, for me, what made it a lot more difficult was the simple fact that um, we're 37,000 feet in the air. Um, the air pressure is, is different. It's harder to breathe. The plane is shaky. Uh, you know, it's 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 a little darker, you know, our flight was at it was in the evening So it was dark on the plane you know, difficult to see so certain things that would just you know Tested me a little bit on my skills. I haven't waited tables in quite a while um, Obviously, I still know how and but I'm not exactly waiting tables on the plane So, you know, it was just <laughs> It was just mixing all of that together and saying okay, Alexa, you got this like Don't even get yourself all flustered so that was the flight today um, all in all it was a great experience so I just have one more thing to do <sighs> I can't believe I only have one more thing to do before I earn my wings and that is my EME on Monday um, and I think I've you know I've kind of from the few conversations that I've had with just a few people because they technically can't tell you exactly what the EME was over and what it was about but you know a lot of people have hinted at certain things of what to do to be able to just pass on your first time so my nerves are a lot more common about that as it is right now too so I'll do that on Monday and then Tuesday I walk across that stage and then hopefully Tuesday I can be back home in my bed in Houston Texas cuddling with my dogs if not I'll be there Wednesday but that's it for tonight, guys. I'll let y'all know how the EME goes. Deuce.